Hello Caragalum and welcome to your June announcements. Whether you're joining us with our online service or whether you're just watching these announcements through our social media platforms, thank you for checking in. Thank you that you are wanting to find out what is happening in the life of the church throughout June. Um, just want to bring you some of those announcements now. Uh, you'll find some of the usual ones, but you'll also find some new ones that are actually there as well. Uh, so first up, again, if you're in the service this morning, Thank you, thank you for joining us. You could be in the building at 11 a.m. or you could actually be joining us on Facebook or YouTube. But thank you for joining us. Thank you for connecting in. Um, just to remind you, if you are wanting to come along to our morning service at 11 a.m., we do have kids facilities available. So we have our crash facility, which is now up in the sports hall or the minor hall. We then have um, bite size, which is out the back for our sort of younger age group from like school, uh, secondary school age and up. And then we also have our Illuminate age group, which is sort of from about maybe four, five, maybe up to them P7 group. We will, if you have anyone that, or you know of anyone that would love to come along to any one of those, send them along we would love to see them we would love to have them connect in with one of the leaders there so um, whether it be abby or allison or joe um, just connect in with one of those and we would love to be able to get your kids along to one of those groups um, Sunday evening services, we've been doing chat and tunes. Um, I think now they're on pause for the summer, but we will still continue our Sunday night services every Sunday at half six on a Sunday night. We would love to see you there and love to see you come along with those. Um, one thing that we is new then this month is on the 19th, which is Father's Day, and we're going to do a church lunch and we would love to see everyone coming along to that. It's going to be a barbecue, there's going to be bouncy castle, there's going to be kids activities there and it's just going to be an amazing way to actually connect in the different people within the life of the church. Maybe some people you see regularly but also some people you may not see that regularly and you actually just want to reconnect with them again. It'll be a fantastic time and we would love to see you there. Um, Another announcement then that isn't part of our regulars is that on the 26th of June, we're going to have John Dickinson, who is part of Carmoney Presbyterian, come along and do a memorial service. It's at 4.30. Um, and this is for a time of just remembering people that over the past year, you may have lost. Um, it's something, as most of you know, would be personal to me and I will definitely be there and I am really looking forward to hearing what John has to say and what John has to share um, and it's just going to be a time where we can remember those lost ones over the past 12 months. Um, again, it's going to be at on at half four on Sunday the 26th of June and we would love for you to join us just to stand by someone who has maybe lost someone or to stand for yourself or just whatever you feel is actually right in that moment but please feel free to come along as a church and as a church community um, back to our usual announcements then so monday mornings we have alison masson who will be running our usual keep fit classes we would love to see you ladies come along to that i think it starts in around half nine on a monday morning again we would love to see you ladies come along to that um, the total opposite of that then happens on a Tuesday morning where it's men only and it's breakfast bap club. There will be breakfast bacon baps, there will be uh, pool, table tennis, different things like that. And just a time for men to come together and just to have a chat. Um, again, if you would love to come along to that guys, come along. No need to sign up, no need to do anything like that. Just come along on a, sun, on, sorry, on a Tuesday morning at 10.30. Um, next up, we have Bible study and prayer meeting. These are on every Wednesday night uh, from half seven and usually run for about one hour long. Uh, we would love to see you there. They run alternate weeks. Look out for the which one's which on or which night it's going to be on on social media. And we'll also send it out in our weekly email as well. Just check out which one's on and then come along to it on a Wednesday night. We would love to see you there at it. Um, next up, Emerge. Emerge is on half seven every Friday night from secondary school age and up. And if you have, if you know people that fall into that age group, then come along to it. Andy and Abby would love to see you there at it. Um, yeah, come along, join us on a Friday night. Um, another thing is just volunteers. We are looking for volunteers. Um, 
sound team, the words team, the welcome team, you'll probably see the same faces and the same hands going to work on a Sunday morning. And we would love if we had new people, if we had fresh people coming along to actually help out in those areas. Also our kids ministries, you heard it earlier, we have three different uh, kids ministries run on a Sunday morning and they're growing. Uh, we need people to be able to come in and help and support that just to keep it running and they allow it to thrive at the same time. So if you feel that you're called to go and do something like that, or if you actually just want to help and volunteer, then come and approach the people that are actually running those things um, and they would love to try and get you involved in some shape or form. Um, pastoral support, as always, Pastor Johnny is available. Um, if you need him at all for any pastoral support, please get in touch with him. His email is going to come up there. It's johnny at carrotgatemchurch.co.uk. be more than happy to hear from you and help uh, with needs uh, that you're facing right now. And then giving. Thank you again. Thank you for continuously giving week in, week out. Um, as you know, your, your giving and your tithe every single week gives to the work of the church. And not only that, but also the work of the local community. Um, we, we like to think we can uh, give an outreach to our community and the people who actually need it as well. And your tithe goes a long way to actually making that happen. So thank you. If you're unsure about how to give or if you want to give, there is a few different options up in the top, right, top left hand corner there for you. Um, whether it be through bank transfer, whether it be through text, or whether it be through scanning the QR code, which takes you straight to the gift app. Um, really simple and really easy to do. Come and speak to us if you have any questions about it, um, and we'll be sure to help you out there. But thank you, thank you for giving. And lastly, it's just about staying connected. So we staying connected to each other, staying connected to the church and staying connected to God. Staying connected to each other. We run so many different events and so many things that happen within the church. They allow you to connect with different people within the church, whether it be our chat and tunes, whether it be our outreach days and where we go to Croft or where we go to Carnphonic, or whether we just have times within the church as well that allow us to connect with each other. Make sure you stay connected. Make sure you stay connected with someone that maybe God has placed on your heart or planted uh, within you that you just want to reach out to and say hello to and just ask, how are you doing? You know, and just walk beside them in life. So important to do that. And some people that you may think are just okay, those are the people that maybe just really need it. So don't be afraid to reach out to someone, to send that text or to make that phone call. Um, it's by staying connected to the church. As you just heard, there are so many things that happen each and every week in the life of the church. Now, whether that's you know our usual style ministries or whether it's our Father's Day event or the memorial style event that uh, John Dickinson will be coming to on the 26th of June. So many different things happen within our church and we just love for you to come along to that. Um, just keep checking social media, just keep checking your emails. If you're not signed up to emails, let us know, we'll get you plugged into that. But stay connected to the church. And lastly, it's by staying connected to God. It's by staying connected to the Father and having that relationship with Him every single day of every single week, of every single month, of every single year. Stay connected to Him. Keep talking to Him in prayer. Keep talking to Him on your way to work. Keep talking to Him on your way into a conversation. Keep talking to Him continuously. Keep that line of communication open. God wants to hear from you and God wants to speak to you. We just That is our prayer as a church for you this morning, that you are able to hear from God, that you are talking to God, and that you're just having that relationship with Him on a daily basis. So this morning, or this afternoon, or this evening, wherever you are, wherever you're listening to these announcements, we pray that something has resonated with you there. Um, that you hear something that you want to come along to or you want to be involved in. We would love to see you at church. We would love to see you during our Sunday morning services at 11 a.m. to come and worship with us, to come and um, celebrate with us and just have fellowship and just do community and to do life together. We would love to see you there at 11 a.m. every Sunday morning or at 6.30 every fortnight. Just come along to our evening services. Um, that's our announcements. Thank you for listening. Um, and we would love to see you about the place. Have a great day wherever you are. Saturday was silent, surely it was through. Since when house and
impossible ever stopped you Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb Since when This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha If there's anything that he can do Just ask the stone that was rolled
break the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into Through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living Lord Who could imagine so great a
So good morning guys, great to be with you again um, after a wonderful Pentecost Sunday last week. Um, we really had a wonderful time in church I have to say and I hope you've been using your native tongue to share Jesus this week. I hope you've been out there sharing with those around you in the places God has planted you. You've been sharing the love of God and the forgiveness of Jesus and the Lordship of Jesus. Hi Jesus is Lord and he loves us and he has come and paid the price for our sin and he is awaiting us to return to him. Uh, pray that God has blessed you in that. This morning I'm thinking before we start just about those who are battling through sickness. We've had a number of people again with the old COVID is, is 
popped up and some people are very sick and are really wrestling in their body. Their body's fighting through this and we want to pray for them this morning. We also want to pray for those who, who, are, who, are, who are dealing with other uh, issues outside sickness. Some people are, are, are dealing with, with, with financial pre- pressure. Some people are dealing with, with family pressures and, and loss of jobs. And, and this morning we want to come before God right at the start of this time of sharing his word. And we just want to ask that God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond and above all that we can ask or imagine that he will do it that he will bring peace to the storm that he will bring strength to the weary he'll bring salvation to the lost and he'll bring healing to the sick so we're going to pray this morning let's bow our heads and close our eyes father God as we come to you this morning we thank you we thank you that you are great We thank you that your ways are so much higher than ours. We thank you that your power is without comparison. You are unrivaled in your greatness. And Lord, we thank you that all things were made by you and for you. And everything, including us, falls underneath your power and dominion. And God, this morning I want to pray for those who are facing hardships in life. We pray for those who are sick. Pray for those who've got COVID. Pray for those who are wrestling with with, uh, incidents in their body. Pray for those waiting for results from hospital. Pray for those who have a long-term sickness. And God, pray for those who are struggling in their uh, mental health as well. Lord, we pray this morning for healing. Lord, we speak healing to them. I pray even this moment, Lord, uh, that as we come before you, Holy Spirit, that you will touch bodies, restore weaknesses, strengthen the weary. And Lord, that they will be able to come and testify that they met with God. God, we pray for those who are going through financial issues. And we think of so many in our community, so many in our lives, who are really battling with living costs, with prices of stuff, with with not having enough. And this morning, Lord, I pray that you would help us. Lord, that you would give us wisdom and how to handle our money. But Lord, also that you would give us all that we need to get through. Lord, I pray we would still be able to bless others even as we have been blessed. And God, we pray for those uh, who are who are um, in on a t- place of uncertainty as to what the next step is or what they should do next. God, I pray for clarity. Holy Spirit, that you will open eyes, that you will open doors probably is better, and you'll shut some other doors, that we would see the clear way to walk and to follow you. So today, God, we thank you. We thank you that you are hearing our prayers. We thank you that your word says that even when we ask, you've heard from heaven and you're bringing an answer. And today, God, I pray that we would encounter you even in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It's great. Uh, One we shouted, and you've probably already heard it in the announcements, but uh, we're coming up on the 26th. It's a Sunday afternoon, the 26th of June, at 4.30 here in the church building. We're doing a special memorial service. And that's for, for, for those of us who have lost someone who we love, someone who matters to us. And uh, we have lost them, not just in COVID, but maybe maybe you've lost them a long time ago. Maybe they passed on a, a long time ago, but their memory really sits with you. And we, we're creating this time from 4.30, probably for about half an hour, 45 minutes, where we come in, there's a short service of remembrance, and then you get an opportunity to personally remember your loved one. There's some tea and coffee afterwards if you wish to stay. But but really, it's an opportunity to come on purpose with a purpose. And I want to encourage you to come if you can. So it's the 26th at 4.30 here in the church building. And it's a, a, a memorial service of thanksgiving and of hope. We hope to see you there. Amen. Well, if you've got your Bible with you uh, this morning, and I encourage you to, even though we're online, to have your Bible and kind of follow along. We're going to look at, uh, at, at Psalm 95. And, um, and in Bible study last night, I, I, I shared through a lot of this. And, and we were blessed. And I want to share a, a little bit today with you. In church, we're doing something different. We've got a baby dedication. But this morning on the online service, I really wanted to bless you and I wanted to challenge you. And I want this is a time of, 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 of examining where we are in our own hearts and what God is saying to us. So Psalm 95. And the question that I'm asking this morning is, why sing? Why should we be singing? You see, for online, you've maybe just fast-forwarded through the songs, or maybe you just played them in the background. But worship is not worship when we're listening. Worship is worship when we participate. And this morning, I want to ask that question. Why should you sing? Why are we singing? 
Uh, well, a bit of background about Psalm 95. Psalm 95 is in a grouping of Psalms that focus on God who reigns supremely. They're called the enthronement Psalms and they go from Psalm 93, Psalm 95, right through to Psalm 99. And all of these um, uh, Psalms that were written were focusing on and celebrating the grandness and the sovereignty um, of God and how great he is. It's putting God in the center and throwing him in our praise. Uh, and, and the thing about Psalm 95 uh, is when you go to the New Testament in Hebrews 3 um, verses 7 right through to 4, 13, you'll hear an echo of this psalm. Because in Hebrews, actually, word for word, the Hebrew writer of Hebrews quotes Psalm 95. And what that tells us is, is what, what was written here in the Old Testament is still significant in the New, and I think today is significant to us. So let's come and start reading. Psalm 95 verses 1 and 2 says this. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and let us sing psalms of praise to him, our God. The first thing that I want to say this morning is God is enthroned when we worship him. God is enthroned. He, he, is, he is brought to the, he, he is in, in the seat or in the center of our worship. And he is the purpose of our worship. So if he's enthroned in worship, let us praise and let our praise be filled with thankfulness through singing. The psalm begins with this call, come. And when I think about come, and I think it's about moving towards. You know, whenever you say to someone, come here, that the idea is moving towards. And let me suggest that when we come to sing to God, and singing is the way we worship, when we come to sing in our worship, it is a moving towards God. The act of, of, of opening your mouth, of reading the words, of hearing the music and singing along is coming close to God. I think of these verses, uh, my favorite verses in James 4.4. 4. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And I think that, that, that come towards God, we come in what manner? We come to worship him, we come to thank him. So move towards God for he is our only source of unbeatable rest and unbreakable salvation. Psalm 62 1 says, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. And he is my fortress. Therefore I will never be shaken. As we draw close to God, we realize that he is our rock. That our whole life, our whole hope is built upon him. And therefore we cannot be shaken. So let's move towards God as we start to worship him with our song. So question one this morning is, how should I sing to God? That's a great question. Take a second and think about it. How should you sing to God? Often it's about, the f we, we, we focus on the function, the functionality of our singing. Do we have hymn books? Do we use the on-screen words? Is there a band? Is there an organ? Is there a guitar? Do we stand? Do we sit? Is there a leader? Is there a choir? And we're, we're so caught up in the functionality of singing that we forget that there's a purpose or there's a way to approach God in our singing. So this psalm suggests four ways in which we can approach God with our singing. In fact, it gives us four instructions on how we can move towards God. Number one, let us sing to the Lord. That seems obvious, but is it? Because sometimes when we come to sing to the Lord, what happens is we become aware of other things. We start to sing um, and it's about how we sound. We start to sing and it's about how we feel. Spurgeon wrote about this. And he said, it is to be feared that very much, it, even of religious singing, is not unto the Lord, but unto the ear of the congregation. Above all things, we must, in our service of song, take care that all we offer is with hearts of sincerest and most fervent intent directed towards the Lord himself. 
Singing expresses through uh, hu human uh, emotion a feeling of thankfulness. Um, mo and mostly that feeling is a, is a singing expressing joy. And the Bible says at the heart of Christianity is joy. So let us sing to the Lord. Make sure he is the focus. Don't be caught up in the distractions. Keep him at the center. Seems obvious. But sometimes we forget. Secondly, he says, let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Who are we praising? We're praising the one who is our savior. He is the one who has made us, but also remade us through salvation. And I love what the psalmist encourages. He says, there are moments to shout with joyful um, a, a exuberance. So shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. I read this great um, thought by a, a, a commentator called McLaren, and he says this. Uh, Psalm 95, 1 and 2 gives a striking picture of the joyful tumult of temple worship. How there was this throng of noise, shrill cries of gladness, loud shouts of praise, songs with musical accompaniment rang simultaneously through the courts. Sometimes when we think of the Old Testament picture of the temple, we're very, um, our, 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 our pictures formed by what we see on the TV or what we've seen in the Jesus movies or what we've seen in, in the Moses movies. And it's all very serene and calm. And there is a place really for reverent worship and calmness. But I think that the temple where, where Israel came to worship God was a place of crying out with praise and joy. And there was a, a, just this excitement of enth and enthusiasm. And therefore, when we come to worship God, when we come to sing to the Lord, let us shout joyfully. God should be honoured with a happy, enthusiastic heart. Um, and as I said, there is a place for somber reflection, but it should not be the dominant tone. God's people have much to be thankful and joyful for. We greet God with unashamed enthusiasm because he is our refuge and he is our rescuer. So let us sing to the Lord, but let us sing joyfully. Let us come in to him with thanksgiving, or as the, uh, the King James Version says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Coming into his presence, this means that worship should be done with a conscious sense of God's presence. God's people don't sing in the empty space. Our, 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 when we sing to God, when we sing hymns of praise, when we come to him, we're not just filling the room with noise. It's not a concert. We're coming to God and we should be conscious in ourselves and in our spirits that God is here. He is here in our presence as we worship him. And as we worship him, we are in his presence. There is or should be a true connection between God and his people as we worship let us come with thankfulness into his presence. And the last thing he says, let us sing, uh, come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. So we come into his presence and thankfulness is this sense of worship is to be offered specifically with thanksgiving. So some people re sing the psalms, some people sing songs of praise. And thanksgiving is a call to worship. And, and let me just say this about thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is when we stop and we look at what we have. When we look at who he is. When we look at all that we have been given and we say thank you. Uh, in my house, uh, I have a couple of children and God teaches me so much about his fatherly love through my children. And um, one of them um, just got a, a new perfect book which he needed them to be for. He's been needing them for about six months and eventually they came in the post. and. Um, and he tried them on and he came in uh, and he wouldn't be known for saying, uh, for being great with thanks, th being thankful and he come in and he said, got the boots, dad, thanks. And he turned and walked away very somber. But you know, for me, there was a joy in my spirit. Number one, that he got them and he was pleased. But secondly, that he wanted to 
in his own way, give thanks, say thank you for doing it. And God is a similar, he's a good father and he wants us to come and he wants us to thank him. And our thankfulness should be, and our worship should be comprehensive and inclusive of all that we have encountered and of all that we have received from him. Come before him with thanksgiving. So that's how we should sing. The second question is, why should you sing? So if we want to sing, we know how to do it, but why should we do it? Well, I think it's because when we look at God, we see the incomparable greatness of our God. And that's the reason that we sing thankful songs of praise to God. When you look at Psalm 95, uh, verses 3, 4, and 5, it says this, For the Lord is a great God, a king above all gods, and he holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The seas belong to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land too. These verses 3, 4, and 5 give reasons for praise because our God is a great king above all gods. Let me give you a little bit of background on this because sometimes in our world when we talk about the king above all their gods, uh, people get a bit bent out of shape and they go, well, we don't worship other gods. We're going to come to that in a minute because we do. But when this was written, uh, Israel was, was kind of very unique because they were one of the very, very few groups who believed in one God and one God only. And their God was Yahweh. And uh, the, what they were saying was, other people may think that they are gods or other gods and, and they're great, but our God is supreme because our God is the creator. Elohim, the one who makes. And you find this in Genesis 1, 1, when the Bible tells us that, 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 that God created, from the very start of the book in the, the whole Bible, God is the creator, Elohim. And he is the one of great strength. He is the one of great might. He is the one who is strong. So in the midst of all of these many nations with many gods, he says to Israel, God Almighty, through the psalmist, says, remember to worship our God, Yahweh, the one and only God, and realize this. Worship him because he is above all others. He is supreme. He is great. We don't have to worry about the gods of the Baals, or we don't have to worry about other religious trinkets. Do you know what we need to worry about when we come to worship? The God of me, the God of you. How I like it done. What I want to do. We need to get past the God of, of singing, who, who, who sounds good and who looks good. We need to get past the God of preference, what I like and what I want. We need to get past the God of division. I was speaking to someone today and they just were sharing a really sad tale about worship in a Christian church and how it became politicised and then it became legalised. And there was a whole issue that arose because the heart of worship was lost. The purpose for the way to worship, the way to sing, was lost. The psalmist makes it clear here. Why should I sing? For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. We should sing because our God is great. He is above all all gods above all things and therefore he's worthy to be praised through our singing and through our worship god is unrivaled among all the gods of men the lord has no rivals the god of israel is the great god above all gods and then he goes on and he says because he is also the creator and this picture of hands i love it, 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 it it's it's so simple but it's so strong he says our god is so big that those big mountains and those vast oceans and these dry lands he holds in his hands more than that he created them 
And the inferred thought here is that if God has formed the mountains and God has, 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 has formed the seas and the dry land, God has also formed you. You are part of his creation. The creator has made you and therefore creation should worship the creator, should come with thankfulness, should see him as God. He holds the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains, and the vastness of the seas and deserts and dry lands in his hands. He formed them. He holds them. The New Testament says all things were made by him, all things were made for him, and he sustains all things. Spurgeon says that God owns the seas because he made it. He owns you because he made you. You are his creature. And by all the rights of creatorship, you belong to him. He claims you. Will you dispute God's claim today? I pray you don't. I pray you come and you say, God, I worship you because I realize you are above. I sing to you these songs of praise, not because I like them, not because they're my favorite, not because they make me feel good, but I, I come and I sing them to you because I realize who you are. Thirdly, the question that I would ask is, so is humility important in how we worship God or how we sing to God, not even worship, how we sing to God? We've asked the question, how? Joyfully with thanksgiving. Sing to the Lord. Come into his presence. Expect to draw near to him. Why? Because he is above all things. He is the creator, the sustainer, and the saviour, the redeemer. But then, what's our position? So that's God's position, but what's our position? I think humility is the proper position to adopt when moving to worship God. Remember, worship is coming to sing to God as a drawing close to him. It's coming in, coming to him and him drawing near to you. So verse 6 and 7 says this, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before God our maker. For he is our God. We are the people he watches over. The flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today. Let us worship him. Uh, it's interesting that the Hebrew word and the Greek word mostly used in the Bible for worship, literally means to bow down, to prostrate oneself before a monarch or a superior in homage. Uh, it's about bowing down. And the psalmist says this, he says, come before him, let us bow down, let us kneel before God, our great King. Why? Why is the invitation to come why is God so concerned about the right posture for praising him, for the right posture for singing to him? I think there's a gentle plea here calling the worshipper to do what is right before God. Not because it's good for God, but because it's good for them. Let us humble ourselves. Let us worship and bow down. There is a lowering of yourself. Let us kneel before God the Maker. There is a lowering, a lowering of yourself. The Bible makes it clear that God loves the humble, but He stands in opposition to the proud. And when we come to sing, when we come to worship God, let's not make the mistake of thinking He is impressed by how we sound by how high we lift our hands, by how good we make it happen, by how slick the music is, by how well the lights in the song is, by how good the set is. God is not in, impressed by those things. God draws near to those who, whether physically on the outside or certainly spiritually on the inside, bow the knee, bow down before him and worship him because he is our maker and our Saviour. Why is humility important in worship? In his presence, man must bow down before him. Man must kneel in the attitude of complete submission and obedience. This is the truth which we read that need to remind ourselves. Really, we owe humble worship to God because he has made us 
and he has remade us. The maker and the redeemer. And when we read this, these verses, he says, um, we are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. Um, and that's a reflection of, I can hear the words of Jesus. Jesus picks up on that same narrative. God watches over us. And when we worship and we draw close, he watches closely over us. In, in, in John 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Three times he says a variation of the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. They know him and they follow him. And I want to suggest today that when we come to worship God and we come with the right humble heart and we come with songs of thanksgiving and praise, we come the way that God has mapped it out. I want to suggest that we hear God. He says here, If only you would listen to his voice today. If I'm listening to his voice, then I want to tell you it's because God is speaking. Let me make a proposition to you. Let me propose to you that worship is a doorway that opens into God's presence. And as we sing, we come in. As we humble our hearts before him, as we worry less about how it's being done, what it sounds like, the songs we're singing, and more about who we're worshiping. We come to a place where God speaks and where we hear. Humble worship of God and a recognition of him as creator should lead us to a listening ear and a soft heart. Surrender towards him. There's something wrong when a worshiper does not obey and trust God. Very quickly, verse 8. The Lord says, don't harden your hearts as they did in Meribah, as they did in Massa in the wilderness. For though your ancestors tested and tried my patience, even though, even though they saw everything I did. The fourth thing I would say is, hard hearts don't understand the value of singing praise to God. I've seen it in my life. We sing too long. Why do you need to sing those many songs? I don't understand why you love to sing so much. Our church is known for one thing in particular, and that's being able to sing a lot. We love to sing, and people who come say, singing's brilliant. The church, the, the praise band, the people in the congregation, it's all, it's just there. It's what we're known for. But that's because we understand the value of singing. Singing is, singing onto the Lord, not just singing, singing onto the Lord, is a doorway that opens it in his presence, where we can encounter him, where our hearts are kept soft because we're humbling ourselves before him. And also where we value those places of expression. When people get excited, when people want to shout out, when people jump and run, that's great. Why? Because it's an expression of joy before God. But hard hearts are right there. He says, don't let, or don't harden your hearts as they did in Meribah. You'll find that in Numbers. 18. And in Meribah is an interesting story because um, in Meribah is where Israel come to a place that is inhospitable. They're in a desert. They found water. The water's bitter. They don't know what they're going to do. They all kind of, they're, 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 they're uptight about this. They, they don't know what's going to happen. And they start to complain. They look at the circumstance and they say, this is terrible. And when I read it, I always remember that they blame Moses because they say, you brought us here. And the truth was he didn't, but it reveals their hard hearts because they had forgotten that God had led them there. And if he led them there, he would provide for them. Israel had forgotten at Meribah when they looked around and they seen all of the problems, they forgot who had led them in. They thought it was Moses. And therefore they blamed them and they had forgotten God. They'd forgotten about God because the pressures of life were so great. And actually that's for us similarly. Sometimes we can be in a place where we're so surrounded by pressures or life hasn't worked out as we planned. And we forget that it's God who has walked with us or led us into those places. That he will sustain us, that he will strengthen us and also that he will lead us out. And we stop worshipping. We stop singing. We lose our voice of praise. We deal coldly with facts and our, our, our walking with God is really a routine. 
There's no joy in it. There's no expression in it. There's no, there's no enthusiasm. There's no singing. There's no praise. We have become hard-hearted. The psalmist says, and it's reflected in, in Hebrews, do not harden your hearts. The fact that he says that would suggest that um, the hardness of hearts has something to do with us, with our choices, that we're not totally disconnected from it. Certainly at Meribah, Israel had, an, had a chance because God does say to Moses, lift the staff, strike the rock, water will come. But they were looking for a spectacular sign and Moses gave them it and God wasn't happy. God says, let me provide how I want to provide. Just worship me, sing to me, give praise to me, thankful, uh, be thankful, draw close to me. And your hearts will stay soft. C.S. Spurgeon suggests a number of ways in which we can, when reflecting on ourselves, ask the question, has my heart become hard? Number one, he, he says, do you demonstrate emotion regarding spiritual things? Or is it just cold and dry? If it's cold and dry, your heart may have become hard. Have you del delayed sowing into that full deep relationship with God? Maybe it's because your heart has become hard. Are you consumed with, with conversations about doubts and foolish criticisms? In worship, I think more than anything in the Christian life, it's one of those places where we talk more about others and how they do it. You know, it's very divisive. In fact, I would say it's one of the main reasons that we have denominations is because actually our core values are the same. The Bible, Jesus is saviour of the world, the Trinity, that man has fallen, that, 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 that we all will go to heaven, that salvation is an act of grace. The, all of those things are common, but how we worship, they're too extravagant, they're too loud, they're too quiet, they only sing psalms, they, they only use an organ. We are so caught up in the form of it that we've forgotten about the heart of worship. We get caught up in those foolish criticisms. It's maybe a saying that your heart has become hard. We're hanging around in evil, evil company, people who don't know Jesus are, are the only people we spend time with. And not because we want to evangelize, but just because we don't want to talk about Jesus. I love this. He wrote this 100 years ago, and, 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 and Spurgeon says this. You are, there could be a hardness in our hearts when we start focusing on silly amusements, all intended to kill time and prevent thought about divine things. What's he saying? He's saying when all of our time is, can, is, is, is spent in, in pursuing other things, when we're time consumed by our desires, our interests, our hobbies, and there's no time to sit and to think and reflect and to worship and to sing to God. It's probably a sign that our heart has grown hard. And when we indulge in our favorite sin, when we keep feeding that, it's maybe a sign that our heart is grown hard to God. God said this, he says, learn from those who've gone before. He said, your ancestors have tested my patience. Don't test the patience of God. We test God by our unbelief. That was the great sin or the, the, the hardness of heart was that, that at Meribah and, and at Massa they didn't trust God. Unbelief trumped faith. And I will say this, you'll stop singing, you'll stop worshipping, your heart will become hard. And the sign will be whenever, as a sign of, of, of you no longer trusting God. Whenever... If God is God, why am I going through this? If God is God, why hasn't he done that? When we start thinking like that, when we start, when the creation starts to tell the creator how he should sustain and create and hold and save, we have a problem. The last thing I want to say is he accuses them of being rebellious. For 40 years, I was angry with him, verse 10 and 11. And I said, they are people whose hearts are turned from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So, my, I am, so in my anger I took oath, they will never enter a place of rest. Let me say this, rebellious hearts never find rest in God. Rebellious hearts never find rest in God. If you're trying to worship him, if you're trying to sing praises to God, but you don't want to do it his way, you want to do it your way, you won't find rest. It won't be refreshing. 
You will not hear God. You will not be relaxed. You'll only be caught up in the annoyances. You'll be distracted by the incidental. Why? Because it's not about worshiping God. It's just about singing. Wandering hearts. He said their hearts wandered in the desert. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of the consequence that there was no rest for them. They were anxious, they were annoyed, and they wondered. And he says, you'll never find a place of rest. God's desire for you in singing praise to him, in worshiping him, is that you are rest, and you find rest and are refreshed. Is singing important to God? Yes. Why? Because we get to draw close to him, we move towards him, we hear him, we get to give thanks to him, we get to realize our position of humility before him, we get to obey his command, and in return we are refreshed and enabled and strengthened. And God, God is glorified. God is glorified in the praise of his people. So let me ask you the question again, why sing? Because when you sing, you move towards God and it opens up all of the things that we need. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. It benefits us. It glorifies him, and it is his plan. Let me encourage you today. Keep singing. Keep worshiping. Don't, don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes it's out of tune. But when the songs are a reflection of thankful hearts, God will be blessed you will find rest and be encouraged and you'll hear from him. Lord, today we just pray that you would help us. Help us, Lord, in the fight to keep our hearts soft, to keep our lips praising you. And in the midst of all that is happening around us, God, I pray that you would help us. Help us to faithfully worship and praise you. Help us to humble ourselves before you, that we may hear you as we walk through this door of welcome into your presence through praise and worship. And God, I pray today that we wouldn't wander, that we wouldn't wander from you. Lord, that we wouldn't become distant, that we wouldn't demand our own way, but we would be refreshed and renewed in our worship and praise. Amen. May God bless you. I pray uh, that you have a great week and I pray that you keep singing and praising the Lord. Good morning to you. God bless.